This is insane. For years, I avoided United Airlines like the plague. I mean, when you think of United American or Delta, what is the first thing that comes to mind? To me, it's a feeling of dread and a desire to fly literally any other airline to avoid the seemingly high odds of cranky staff, low quality food, and seats that passed their best before date years ago. The truth is that in the past five years or so, things have radically changed at US Airlines. Today, I realized I still don't love United, but there are some super interesting takeaways here that I think you'll want to hear. If you're new here, you might think, why listen to me? Who is this random dude? I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Sweden, half American who has been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past eight years, I've been lucky to call reviewing airlines my full-time job, and in that time, I've flown 150 different airlines, always self-funded. Nothing makes me happier than seeing you guys have an amazing trip after following my advice. So I hope this video helps you with your choices. Everything started in Jamaica back in March when an irresistible business class fare from Jakarta to New York popped up for $1,200 round trip. Without hesitating, I locked in two tickets for Oscar myself in September, hoping that my plans would make these tickets make sense. Sure enough, in August, we traveled back to Korea where we lived in 2018, this time with some of our best friends surprising them with a flight in Qatar Airways Q Suite. Check out that video on our channel Oscar and Dan because it's so much fun. And then we flew down to the Philippines before heading to Kuala Lumpur. All in all, these were some of the best weeks of travel we've had since the pandemic, mainly because we were reunited with some of our favorite places. When it was time to jump on this ticket, we caught a quick Malaysia Airlines flight down to Jakarta before flying from Jakarta to Singapore on the always phenomenal Singapore Airlines, followed by an extremely underwhelming flight on Swiss, and then finally made it to Zurich. After spending our four hour layover in the Swiss business class lounge, we headed to the gate where our newly painted United 767-300 was awaiting for the almost nine hour journey to Newark. What makes this aircraft so cool is that it barely has any seats, literally. This aircraft is configured in a remarkably premium heavy configuration for routes like this to Switzerland or to London, for example. Despite the relatively small aircraft size, there are 46 Polaris business class seats in a 111 configuration, 22 premium economy seats, and a laughably small economy cabin of 99 seats, of which half have extra legroom. In total, this plane has less seats than most 737-800s or A320s at 167 total. Needless to say, economy is a pleasure to fly on this intimate aircraft, and it would be my aircraft of choice for economy or premium economy transatlantic flights. In the enormous business class cabin, all seats most definitely are not created equal, and you want to try to snag the odd numbered window seats for the most privacy. So let's check out the cabin, shall we? One thing that I can say puts US Airlines in a league way above the rest of the world, especially United and Delta, is their apps. When I say these apps do anything you could possibly ask for and more, I mean it. The apps let you track your bags, learn copious amounts of information about your flight, including upgrade and standby lists, live seat maps, details about your onboard experience, detailed connecting airport maps, and oh yeah, incredibly efficient chat support that almost always answers instantly and handles almost all requests without the need to call in. The tech aspect of US carriers is heavenly and it's shocking how far literally all other countries' airlines lag behind. I sometimes spend close to an hour checking hundreds of United seat maps just to learn how the loads are in different routes via their app. Anyway, I was literally in the jetway texting a United agent to change my frequent flyer number because they couldn't do it at the gate. And before I even got on board, the issue was resolved. Now, welcome on board United, the airline where 95% of the staff are unhappy with management. Yikes. Still, I was greeted with a smile and made my way to my seat 5 Lima. In comparison to the even numbered rows, I struck gold. These seats are little private cocoons while the even numbered seats are completely on display. The 
There's something very satisfying about the way United stacks your in-flight gear on the seat. It's like a stack of presents. These are really items to get excited about too, as you'll see later. The cabin itself is giving a little bit of makeup on a pig given that the plane is 22 years old. The gray is kind of depressing, so the color scheme is a miss for me, but that doesn't really matter as long as the seat is comfortable. United Polaris is a thoroughly thought through product, which I really wish you could say for more airlines. As you sit down, you notice that everything you need is in the place where it makes most sense. There's a code hook next to the large touchscreen video monitor, which has a storage compartment below it for glasses, phones, etc., which can be conveniently charged through the USB right next door. The table also extends from under here, and as in any well-planned seat, you can move it out of the way to leave your seat even while using it. Further to the right, our high-tech assortment of seat controls allow us to easily manage our seating position while sitting or sleeping. To the left, to the left, our armrest contains the in-flight reading. Yes, for the return of in-flight magazines. This armrest also lowers. Above it is a fake marble surface, which is a good spot for storing things that you don't want to put in this little locker. My personal favorite spot to store things. Below it is another USB port, a charging port, your headphone jack, and a remote. If you've watched my videos, you also know I love a good little lamp. Any airplane seat with a little lamp earns extra coziness points in my book. Unlike Swiss and Lufthansa, where every head of every passenger in the cabin is visible from your seat, United has a smartly staggered configuration, meaning you can't see a single other passenger or the top of their head from your seat. There is no need for a door because the privacy is sehr gut. How nice would it be if the walls could be lowered here so you at least had the option to see your travel companion? That is a whole lot of raving about United, isn't it? What can I say? The seat's good. The flight attendants did a decent job with the pre-departure service. The lady working my aisle came around simply yelling, OJ or champagne? I opted for a cup of OJ. If you want to get excited for the rest of the flight, there is a luxurious single sheet menu. The selection is inspiring. What a choice of appetizers. Should I have the leafy green salad or what about the leafy green salad? Not bad, although not having a drink menu kind of suggests they don't want you knowing what the alcohol they're serving is, doesn't it? Well, well, let's hop over to New York, New York and hopefully visit my family. <laughs> let's go. Now, if you haven't been in New York for a while, you'll notice the energy is a little different down by Wall Street because wow, have those guys lost a lot of money this year. Not just them, but all of us. Around $36 trillion in stocks and bonds have been wiped away, more money than the GDP of the entire US. So if you're an investor with a classic portfolio of stocks and bonds, you're probably seeing your worst losses in 100 years, down around 34%. Luckily for me, I'm already prepared thanks to my art investments with Masterworks. I've been investing with Masterworks for over a year now, and it's been awesome to see them selling paintings and getting returns to their investors, even as inflation keeps rising and stocks keep falling. In fact, they've sold two paintings just since my last video with them. One just last week for a 17.8% net return, and one in early October for a 21.5% net return. And the one before that, a 33% net return. With numbers like those, you can see why Masterworks has a wait list. But using my link in the description, you'll get skipped the 2,000 people or so in line and start using Masterworks immediately right alongside me. So as we take off, let me finally publicly announce the winner of my Qatar Airways business class giveaway. The winner was contacted a few weeks ago, but now I can finally say in this video, congratulations, Angel F from the Philippines, who is flying to Dubai to visit her sister. But if you didn't win, don't worry, because I'm already launching another giveaway and it's going to be even more fun because this time you are the one who gets to give something away. You will get the gift of giving a ticket to someone you love or who you think deserves it. You can read more about this giveaway and enter in the description below, and I can't think Thank you enough for all your support. Now one lemon mint, please. Oh wait, I'm on United. After takeoff, the crew came by asking, 
Want some warm nuts? And serving drinks off their carts. I asked for a cranberry seltzer water mix with three ice cubes, which was my biggest mistake ever. I only realized after saying it what a ridiculously specific request that was. As the flight attendant responded by saying, oh boy, someone knows what they like, in a wonderfully New York way. That gave me a good laugh and a good deal to think about. To get over the slight embarrassment, I thought I'd better find a respectable show to watch. Here is where the tech comes in again. This is an excellent entertainment system, really top notch with hundreds of movies and full seasons of all types of shows. But if it makes you feel meh, I prefer my little phone screen, you can also stream the content on your phone. I preferred the big screen and opted for the most respectable show of all Bob's Burgers. The headphones are from luxury US brand United and are among the worst business class headphones I can remember. The sound is sort of like listening to a movie through a wall of an echoey tin shack. Now the page on my phone that showed the entertainment it also led to the Wi-Fi portal, which offered all types of fun stuff like in-flight messaging, free access to partner websites, and then paid Wi-Fi at the following prices. I should mention that for a short while during the flight, the Wi-Fi didn't work. And this brings us to another thing I've really grown to appreciate about US carriers. You know that if anything goes wrong, whether it's broken entertainment, Wi-Fi, a missing meal, or an equipment swap, United and its US competitors are world leaders in offering compensation. Our meal was served merely an hour after takeoff, which would be quite impressive had the whole thing not been served on a single tray cafeteria style. Kind of surprisingly, the meal was actually great. Sure, this salad probably cost a dollar to make and tasted like grass, but the main course was a well-balanced tofu curry, and this Swiss chocolate chip cookie was yummy. There is also real oil and vinegar, which is quite rare on US airlines. Also, the salt and pepper shakers were supposed to resemble the United logo, but tell me these are not giving Death Star. As we left the final European land behind us, the long journey was starting to catch up with me and I decided it was time for a nap. This brings us to all the fun amenities that were waiting at our seat during boarding. Specifically, there are two pillows, one of which is a cooling memory foam. This pillow rules the sky. There's also a luscious Saks Fifth Avenue blanket and even a mattress pad available on request, but the crew wasn't really giving off vibes of we would love to give you a mattress pad, so I may do with a bear seat which in fairness was extremely comfortable and spacious as a bed by business class standards. It was literally a world apart from the wooden bench I slept on in Swiss business class the night before from Singapore. Also unlike Swiss and most European airlines, United always has individual air vents to allow for temperature customization. Now, theoretically sleeping on a day flight would require an eye mask. This was naturally available in the awesome new away amenity kits that United offers, along with a bunch of other items. No one does amenity kits like North American carriers, in my opinion. They just have everything you need. You know, actual useful stuff like a pen for landing forms and tissues for the dry air. As you might guess if you've flown a US carrier though, an eye mask is never really necessary. My dear fellow Americans, 90% cannot take a flight without having the window shade closed from takeoff to landing. It's a daytime flight after all, so why sit in the darkness for nine hours straight and miss these gorgeous views? Soon enough, we were already a good way over the Atlantic. My clothes were looking rather creased, so thank goodness for the lavatory crease release. No, seriously, what a great bathroom amenity. The lavatory itself was also quite fresh, considering the age of the plane and that the crew didn't clean it throughout the flight. Now, you remember how I was relatively impressed by the catering out of Zurich? Well, that sort of dwindled when I was served the same meal a second time about an hour prior to landing. Again, it tasted good, but yeah, I was ready to get off and have some New York bagels. With tofuri cream cheese and everything but the bagel seasoning. Oh yeah. Overall, I guess my point of this video is that United has really risen. 
let's not exaggerate here, they've risen a lot relative to where they were before. In the meantime, arguably European airlines have really fallen compared to their former greatness, which honestly at this stage makes flying United preferable to flying SAS, Lufthansa Swiss, and probably a handful of other Star Alliance carriers across the Atlantic as well. At least with United, you know you'll get a great seat, the best apps and tech you can imagine, food that rivals if not surpasses their European partners at this point, so yeah. I guess I prefer the friendly skies nowadays. I'd still seek out Singapore Airlines or Emirates for transatlantic flights on the few routes they serve, but overall United Polaris beats most European airlines. I gotta say it. Bam. Non-stop Dan out. See you next time and until then, fly safe.